right over here, I had realized that I had written this fancy intro, and it occurred to me that it was no longer the most authentic, the most honest that I could be up here. So last week, when I was in Miami, where I live, I just joined a meditation circle, and we had a shamanic ceremony. And I know you guys are like, what the heck is that? It was my first two. And I sat there with the intention to release all ego and receive anything else that I needed to so I could best serve you all here today. Today, we're going to talk about one of my tools for shifting anxiety. And I'll just insert a little disclaimer here. I'm not a doctor, but a human who has experienced it at multiple points in my life. Growing up, I had a little bit of a nervous mom. I love you, mom, but some of you may know what I'm talking about. Uh, my parents divorced when I was young, at the age of 12. I had an undiagnosed illness for a couple of years. That was a real doozy. And I've been an entrepreneur for 10 years. And if there's any entrepreneurs in the room, you know that that requires you to consistently upload and face new fears. So through my journey, I've built natural tools for shifting anxiety into positive energy so that we can reclaim our power. And the tool that we're going to learn today is my favorite because it's fast, it's free, and it's fun. But let me give you a little backstory before we go there. We all have some type of business mogul, right? Celebrity crush, business mogul, guru we love. And that person for me was Bethany Frankel. Some of you may know her from the Real Housewives. I had studied the skinny girl mogul for seven years. I wanted to learn her business model so I could replicate some form of that in my own career. And I get a call in the middle of a pandemic, and they're like, guess what? You have been selected to go work for Bethany. You are getting a backdoor into this brilliant human business. This is the chance of a lifetime. The odds are slimmer than Harvard. You were picked out of thousands. And I was so excited. I could feel the energy coursing through my veins. It was like my prayers had been answered. The catch. There's always a catch, though, in my mind. The catch is that it was for a new reality show on HBO Max where I would compete to win a job as her BB. And so flash forward 21 days, I walk on the set. And I'm just being me, okay? I'm Italian, so if you guys have ever met an Italian, you know, when we go to a party, we're there to have a good time. So I'm pouring rosé, and we're cheersing, and I'm reading people's auras. And pretty quickly, within 48 hours, things just start going south. The challenge that day was pulling off an entire advertising campaign in under four hours. And Bethany was refusing to get in my photo shoot. So her and I sit down, we're having a conversation very quickly. I can feel the energy's off. She's so angry. It's like, I'm clueless, she's angry, cue the real housewives. And I can feel the waterworks start flowing. I can feel that I'm having this imminent meltdown on camera. And so I get up, and I leave, and I run to the bathroom. There's cameramen trailing me. And at this point, my mind's racing, mascara is streaming down my face. And I lock myself in the bathroom. And I look at the mirror right in front of me. And I have this realization. Every reality show has a villain. And it was about to be me. You guys laughed, but this was the most terrifying moment of my life. I had prided myself on being someone who puts love and light out into the world, and I was terrified about what would happen when the show went live. 
I saw myself being canceled, being labeled as toxic. I saw myself losing friends, clients, family, my business. It got so bad, so low, that I flashed back to seven years prior when my father was on his deathbed. My, can- my father had cancer for most of his life. And I remember when he said that he was proud of me. And I questioned if he would still feel that way now. Maybe your moment wasn't this dramatic, but I know we've all had a moment where our fear overpowered our confidence. Anxiety isn't a one-size-fits-all experience, though, right? It shows up in microwaves sometimes every day, and in macroways, maybe only occasionally. But what you're going to learn in this tool will help you no matter what type you experience. So the first thing is, number one, you got to catch it, okay? That's the key. <laughs> so for me, I'm, this is where it gets funny, by the way. I'm barricaded in this bathroom stall, and I'm literally squished on top of a toilet seat. And I'm treating Bethany like she's a saber to the top, right? I had gone into fight or flight and sprinted away, and... It occurs to me that my mind is playing tricks on me. It's just serving me straight up drama. And that's when I remember that not all our thoughts are true. See, anxiety is confusing because it feels real, right? It feels like that thing that we're freaking out about is flying in our face. Like it's definite certainty. But the fact of the matter is is that, at its core, anxiety is just unhelpful predictions of the future. And we can choose a different prediction. And the fact of the matter is, is that anxiety is actually a superpower. The root of the word sensitive is sense. It means that you can feel. And when you can feel, then you know where you've been focusing. And that's the key to shifting. See, I have been laser focused on the worst case scenario, right? Getting fired and getting canceled. But now that I caught it, I was back. I remember from studying physics in high school that. Energy never dies. It's only transformed. And so I consciously chose to shift it. I looked down and I saw that I had my bag on me. And by the way, when you're filming reality TV, you don't have a phone. There's nothing to buy. You really don't need a bag. It's basically useless. But on this fateful day, I had it. So I reached into my bag and I grabbed my little note. Earlier that morning, I had scribbled my manifest mindset on it. And that's just a fancy term for a little document with statements about my higher self. Okay, so my purpose statement, my mantras, my affirmations. And I read this, and I got back into an alignment with the woman I was in the process of becoming, the woman I wanted to showcase on the show. And in that moment, I knew what I needed to do. I closed my eyes, and I visualized my future self, the version of me who had already won the challenge. I saw myself crushing a photo shoot, having fun with my team, and bringing my A game, going back out. And I received the information about who I needed to be, and what I needed to do to win. So what happened, that's what happened on a spiritual level, right? On, in the brain, I had redirected my thoughts, shifted my emotions, and changed 
the chemical state in my brain and my body. I had raised my vibration from the victim of a tragedy to someone who was reclaiming control of the only thing we truly can control, our energy. See, that's the thing, guys. Anxiety is energy. It means that you have the power to flow massive amounts of energy through you. And who controls your energy? You do. Because who controls your thoughts? You do. So just a little bit more backstory on me. I grew up in a household with two brain doctors. So I was very intense as a little child, but very quickly I started becoming obsessed with the brain. And I went to school and studied psychology and sociology at Emory University. And then I continued my education when I made the leap into entrepreneurship so that I could set myself up for success. I studied early programming, Reiki, intuition, human design, and meditation, and breath art. I literally need a breath like this. And through my research, I created that tool, that tool I use in my moment of crisis, the manifest mindset. And it helps you rewire your brain to release anxiety and believe that you can achieve what you want. I've taught this to thousands of women all over the world. And this future new technique that we're talking about here today is one piece of the puzzle. It helps you see who you need to be to get the result that you want. So, just to be clear, I didn't make it so, okay? Not in a bathroom stall. <laughs> Olympians have used similar visualization techniques for years to perform well during their races. And it's been studied. The Cleveland Clinic found that people who mentally rehearse a workout in their head achieve statistically significant increases in their strength when compared to the physical group, the group of people who actually performed the workout. And this future view technique is the same. It's just a practice run for anything in your life. So back to you, right? How do you use this? Let's ground this and make this really tangible for you. If you imagine a disaster, it spikes cortisol and it triggers anxiety. But when you imagine a positive outcome, your brain releases dopamine and you have access to more creative ideas. Nobody's their best self in survival mode, right? Especially not me. <laughs> and the best part about this tool is that you don't have to be in a crisis and you don't have to be running a marathon for it to work for you. You can use it before a date, before a meeting, before a sales pitch, before a job interview, before a family gathering, right? We all need a little extra good energy before that. I had a client who used this future you meditation for a couple of weeks before a very important meeting. She was working to close a deal for $5 million that would create jobs for thousands of people. And by using this technique, she realized what she needed to do and how she needed to show up on the meeting to create a different result, to close the deal. And it worked. And you can do it too. So how do you do it, right? That's a million dollar question. All right, grab a note on your phone. So let me write this down, it's super easy. So number one, you just close your eyes, you shut off the senses. Number two, you visualize the ideal outcome, right? 
See the picture rolling out before you in your mind with all the juicy details. And number three, ask yourself, who do I need to be and what do I need to do to get it? That answer, that's future you. The version of you has, who has already achieved what you want. And I'll, I'll give you all with this. The human experience is beautiful and very, very intentional. And emotions are messengers. They're there to serve us. They carry information and data. And anxiety is just a signal. It's a signal of your power. You have the power to feel and the power to focus, which by definition makes you a powerful creator.